This is Adam from SonarWorks with another tip. In a previous video, we showed you how to set up presets and select devices with SonarWorks reference software. In this video, we'll go through each parameter of the system-wide software and show you how to optimize your system. Here I've opened reference system-wide software, and under the presets menu, you can see I've selected my DT770 headphones with a built-in audio output. The sound wave icon indicates the active device. The setup menu can be displayed by selecting these three dots on the upper right hand side. We'll get back to settings in one minute. You can register your software by clicking on license information. Clicking on my account will take us to our own account on the SonarWorks website. Here we can check for and download updates to reference software. Setup guide will launch an instructional guide which will walk you through creating your own profiles, and setting up your own presets and devices for your monitor system. Help and support will take you to the support center on the SonarWorks website. Let's check out the settings. Under general settings, we can set a preference for SonarWorks reference to launch on startup. We can also enable or disable our graphics processor, and we can change the theme from a light theme to a dark theme. Let's check our audio settings. Here we have our current setting, Clicking on Test Output will play a test signal for us. Here we can adjust our sample rate and our audio buffer size. A new feature is the safety buffer size. If you're experiencing clicks, pops, or dropouts in your audio, try adjusting the safety buffer size. The safety buffer may improve your audio playback, but if it doesn't, you may have to adjust settings in your audio program. If this is checked, we can adjust the audio device output gain meaning the volume of our monitor system, using system-wide's output gain control or our computer's volume control. And we can retain system-wide as our output device no matter which program we switch to. The notifications menu lets you select which messages from SonarWorks you'll receive. You'll notice the input and output meters are active whenever audio is playing through the SonarWorks app. This blue power button enables or disables the SonarWorks correction. When it's off, SonarWorks is not providing any correction, and when it's on, SonarWorks is providing correction. Let's take a look at the frequency response graph and see what it shows. Currently, the graph is displaying the before curve. This is the uncorrected frequency response of my Bayer 770 headphones. If I also select correction, we now see the before curve along with the correction curve that will be applied to my headphones. We can also display the simulated after curve, which shows us the corrected frequency response. The shape of the simulated after curve is affected by the filter mode settings, which are located at the bottom. The most accurate filter setting is linear phase. With that selected, you can see the frequency response is almost perfectly flat. Some listeners are sensitive to a linear phase effect called pre-ringing, which on heavy percussive sounds can cause a pre-echo. The zero latency filter mode provides real-time monitoring, so you'd probably want to use this while you're tracking or programming. However, the frequency response is not perfectly flat in this mode. In between these two modes, we have a mixed mode. The mixed filter mode provides better latency than linear phase and better frequency response than the zero latency setting. You should try each one to see which one works best for you. Let's look at some other options under the frequency response curve menu. We can choose to view the phase response or the limits, which shows us the headroom of our system. We can also display the target curve that we're trying to achieve with correction. You may also notice that we can display only the left channel, only the right channel, or both channels. Now let's take a look at our monitor controls. On the right side, we have our gain, which is our monitor volume for the system. You can use this control or your computer's volume control. You'll notice the loudest I can go with this control right now is minus 10.2. Some of the volume is reserved. This happens because safe headroom is on. Safe headroom keeps the gain of the equalizer from overloading the output of your system. If your output doesn't seem loud enough, you can try turning safe headroom off and turning the volume up, but be careful you don't cause any distortion. The mono button lets you check your mix in mono instead of stereo. And below the mono button, we see a wet-dry mix control. Adjusting this control 
selects how much of the EQ correction is applied to your system. With the fader at zero, no EQ correction is applied, and with the fader at 100, the output is completely corrected. A setting of 100 is the most accurate or flat sound. However, if you find it difficult to get used to the sound of SonarWorks software, try working at around 70 for a few days and slowly increasing it to get used to the sound of a flat system. Let's take a look at the bass, boost, and tilt controls. Starting with a flat sound, some people like to add a custom house curve, which is a slightly boosted bass or rolled off high frequency response. From this menu, we can slightly increase the bass response, or decrease the bass response, or we can apply a tilt to the frequency response. We can push the tilt up and increase the bass and reduce the treble, or turn the tilt down and increase the treble and reduce the bass. Home stereo systems, and even mastering studios, have a tilt like this, where the bass is slightly increased and the high frequencies are slightly turned down. You can turn your own custom tilt on and off with this button. Separate from the bass boost and tilt, Sonoworks has provided some predefined target curves. The curve called B&K 1974 speaker target is like the home stereo curve we mentioned earlier with slightly boosted bass and attenuated highs. We also have the classic X curve. This simulates the sound of a movie theater. In a theater, the audience sits far from the speakers, so we have slightly rolled off high frequencies and a slightly rolled off bass response. We can turn on and off these predefined target curves with this button here. After you've created a preset for your own monitors, listen to some music you're very familiar with. Try a small bass boost and tilt and see if that feels more comfortable to you in your own listening space. You may prefer your sound a little hyped rather than flat. Remember that these settings are saved within your preset, so when you recall your preset, your preferences will also be recalled. It's also easy enough to bypass these at any time. The bass boost and tilt EQs may make your room sound a little more enjoyable to you. Once you've got system wide up and running, be sure to try out all the options in the software. Enjoy your software and be sure to check out more tips from SonarWorks.